The security of all Southeast Asia will be endangered if Laos loses its neutral independence. Its own safety runs with the safety of us all, in real neutrality, observed by all. Publicly, Kennedy agreed with Khrushchev that Laos should not become a theater of war. In Geneva, Laos was declared neutral once again. In 1962, a coalition government of all three political parties was formed, and the U.S. withdrew its military advisors. Kennedy, however, wasn't playing fair. With the help of a falsified map, he played up the communist threat marked red. The Allied troops of the U.S. marked blue were not displayed on Kennedy's map. This enabled him to station 5,000 troops in neighboring Thailand. In the meantime, the U.S. president had given a green light to covert operations in Laos. The secret war had begun. Enterprise Institute, a Republican think tank, we meet James Lilly. Lilly was U.S. ambassador to China and South Korea and started his career with the CIA in Laos. I was a uh, senior at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, and uh, I was approached by a professor taken to his, off his, his office, which was a very fine paneled office and it was, lights were low and bookshelves and pipe smoking tweeds. Oh god yeah. Hello? Yeah. He said you had a background in uh, Russian studies and that's our major concentration. You have been a, an athlete, a captain of a team which shows that you have some leadership You've been in the Air Force uh, Reserve Officers Training Program, which shows that you are interested in military affairs. Uh, you're born in China. You're you're the kind of guy that CIA wants. Vint Lawrence was also recruited by the CIA directly out of college. They snuck the 22-year-old into Laos in 1962, just as the Americans were officially in the process of pulling out. My first impression was that I was extremely lucky. It was, it was exotic. It was all that a young man who had some cloudy images of what the Far East was like should be. It was hot. The women were beautiful. You know, I was, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. So what we were trying to do was find a big open valley where we could get aircraft in and out of and that was accessible. And Long Chen, at that point, when I first get there, I think I'm one of the first people who go there. It was a beautiful valley full of high grasses, karst formations, and a half a dozen people. And that's where we started. finally found these hill people, Hmong, that disliked the Vietnamese intensely, that lived in the hills. And we found that these people would fight, would be trained, organized under Vang Pao, who looked like he was a leader. He was a former sergeant in the French army. He had charisma. He was a fighter. A couple of case officers discovered him. And uh, they were looking very much for a strong Southeast Asian ally. never forget the first time I met VP. They were dragging a defector down toward him. As he walked by, he just pulled out his gun, blew the guy's head off, and kept on walking. And I said, I have to walk, listen to what this guy has to say. 
the Americans were tolerant of Fang Pao's brutal methods. They needed an ally. Today, Fang Pao is the Hmong leader of 250,000 expatriates living in the USA. His followers affectionately call him the General. เจเปียโตซูเพื่อเดโมแครซีมาตัวอ่อนนองลางเอกมั่วเดโมแครซีนั้นยอมริกาจีเจนงโกเตอรีจอกึ่งคงเยยัวเนยัวจีนงโกเ
I'm not too sure, quite frankly, in the early days, just who actually knew the whole picture. It was sort of like a need to know to get the job done. Some guys might have gone up and they might have worked for a USA customer for their first two or three tours and never got to call hard price, which was ammunition, or troops. Only at the end of the war did it become apparent that the CIA actually owned the airline. And it was the CIA that really ran this entire operation. Their field agents had the relations with the Hmong elders. Uh, they'd worked out the arrangement with Vang Pao. Uh, it was their airline, Air America, that owned most of the agile aircraft flying in the mountains, bringing in supplies, extracting recruits for about a 30,000-man militia, a 30,000-man secret army. It was actually called the Army Clandestine. CIA case officers closely supervised the counterinsurgency offensives and tested a new strategy to batter the communist Patat Lao. The CIA's guerrilla army was fighting with air support. Bombers piloted by Hmong soldiers were called in from Longchang. Not only is this a new way of fighting a war and using air power in a way that's never been used before in human history to take and hold ground almost independent of any ground force. ไปว่ามดเชียงขวางเลยนะมันบ่มีเฮือนหลังนึงที่ชีฟ้ามดเฮือนประชาชนมดอยู่เชียงขวางอยู่ปวงเชียงขวางในบ่มีเฮือนส